Hi everyone, welcome to another video. In today's video, we're going to be discussing the five top tax mistakes to avoid making for SMEs, being small to medium enterprises. So let's get straight into it. The first mistake to avoid making is not having sufficient records. What that means is that you should be storing all your tax invoices and your contracts which prove that you've made a payment or a particular sale in a particular folder. Or even better, have a program like Xero which allows you to save those particular transactions, the substantiation for those transactions in the cloud and then match them to the bank feed. Very, very important if you ever have an audit, the first thing the authorities will want to see is the records of various income and expense items. The second mistake to avoid making is misclassification of employees versus contractors. Contractors are people who have control over their jobs. They are independent of the person who is engaging them and they provide their own tools and equipment. That is a very important test. If the contractor is not independent, does not provide their own tools, has set times in which they can and can't work, then most likely they're an employee rather than a contractor. And what that means is potentially you will need to pay superannuation. You'll need to ensure that you have benefits such as annual leave, long service leave, so on and so forth. Number three on the list is inadequate GST compliance. Here in Australia, if your income hits 75,000 or is projected to hit 75,000, you must register for GST where the sales need to include GST on above that figure. To substantiate, show, that the items that you have claimed include GST, you should have invoices and the contracts showing that those transactions are legitimate. And the other thing you want to make sure is you're charging GST on sales linked to Australia or connected with Australia. What does that mean? That means that if you are selling something overseas, you don't need to charge GST for that because it's outside of Australia. It's not connected with Australia. Sometimes people don't understand that and they inadvertently start charging for GST, which creates extra compliance and extra work. So just be careful of that particular point. Number four is neglecting deductible expenses. Guys, some home office expenses are deductible. Rent can also be deductible. If you are operating a business from your home, so long as the business that you're operating is in an entity separate to the house that you're living in. Say, for example, if you own the home yourself, then you have a company who is running that business, then you can potentially claim rent on the portion of the house that the business is using without incurring capital gains tax when you sell the property. Here's another one, depreciation. Some people forget to depreciate things like their cars or their assets, or they use the wrong type of depreciation. You need to ensure that you're using the right type of depreciation that's currently available by law. For example, at the time of this recording, the immediate expensing was available. And so if you purchased an asset, depending on the type of asset, you can immediately deduct the whole amount. Here's a little tool that you can use when it comes to items to deduct. The ultimate question you need to ask yourself is, is it directly linked to my ability to earn income? If a particular transaction that you have incurred is directly linked to 
your ability to earn income, then legally you will be able to claim it. Just be mindful that if you're doing something like you're a marketing specialist and you want to try to claim your gym membership fees, trying to say that they're directly related to your ability to do work, for example, because they keep you energized, so on and so forth, that's not going to work. It needs to be directly related, Some, something like a marketing course or a marketing program. So if you try to get that through, think again. Number five is late lodgement and penalty payments. We need to be lodging our BASs, our tax returns on time. If we don't do that, we incur a late penalty fee and also GIC, which is general interest charge. Also, we might incur further penalties, such as intentional disregard of the law, but that can be discussed in another video. Ultimately, a program such as Zero, Bank Feeds, HubDoc, and Dext, and regular reconciliation can ensure that you are ready to lodge your BASs and your tax return on time. Because you're always staying ahead, you're ensuring the reconciliations are squared away, and you have the documents, because by using something like Dext or HubDoc, you can easily take a photo of the receipts, which will be uploaded to the cloud, and the vast majority of the information on that receipt will be read and a corresponding entry will be created. For example, if you went to Officeworks and you purchased a laptop, then that program will read that it is from Officeworks and create that particular transaction for you to later reconcile against the bank fee. It will include things like the GST amount, the date, so on and so forth. So you can see how much easier such a program allows you to do your work. And finally, number six is failing to understand capital gains tax concessions for business owners. Guys, you can save a large amount of money if you understand capital gains concessions. We have the 50% 12 month discount, the 15 year exemption on goodwill, depending on whether you are eligible and you qualify uh, based on passing the relevant test, the 50 year active asset reduction, etc. We have things like the rollover. So these are complex topics, but I'm just raising them here for you to gain a bird's eye, high view understanding of the various concessions that are available. Potentially, you might be able to sell your business and pay little to no tax whatsoever. That's huge. Again, it's something that we need to be aware of because the repercussions of getting it wrong are absolutely huge. And it just means money that could have been spent on family, could have been spent on holidays or some other beneficial activity such as donating to not-for-profits is gone. As always, thank you very much for watching. We hope this video was of substantial benefit to you. Please like, share, press the notifications bell so you receive the videos as they come out and you stay informed. Also, consider providing a comment as to what video you'd like us to do next or what you think we need to add to this list. Until next time, all the best. For those of you who have watched till the end, we've added a sixth item to help you out even further.